in a blue economy, there are rich consumers, few in number, but disproportionate in the gigantic slice of income and consumption they take. Again, if we wrote this and said that, would be class warfare. Inside the tent, they're quite happy to admit that that's exactly what they take. <laughs> this is not, um, you know, sharing the pie. This is, we get the pie and we take it. And then there's the rest. The, you know, the 99. The non-rich, the multitudinous many, but only accounting for surprisingly small bites of the national pie. Again, they say it directly in ways we could never say. They know that the system is completely rigged to give them gigantic slices of the pie and to give everybody else surprisingly small and diminishing bites. Remember they told us autonomy will create ever greater income inequality. And not even on the benefit of the one percent so much as the benefit of the one tenth of one percent. I don't know what they're going to live with when the rest of us have been wiped out. And they don't know either because they certainly don't know how it worked. This is the bonfire of the inanities. <laughs> Since we think that plutonomy is here, is going to get stronger, its membership swelling from globalized enclaves in the emerging world, this is, you know, like one of those novels. It's exciting. It's got a hunk on the cover, I guess. We think a plutonomy basket of stocks should continue to do well. These toys for the wealthy. Okay. <laughs> That's where it's emphasizing. <laughs> toys for the wealthy have pricing power and staying power. They are given goods, which is an obscure economics concept, more desirable and demanded, the more expensive they are. Now remember, they're writing this memo to the one-tenth of one percent. And they're telling the one-tenth of one percent, you're a bunch of morons. <laughs> right? You are completely interested in who has more toys when they die. That's your version of life. And you overpay deliberately for your toys so you can brag about how much money you overspent getting that car, that plane, that luxury limousine, etc., etc., etc. You are the most disgusting people we can imagine. Thank you for sending us your money. <laughs> so, you know, Bastiat turns out to have been an optimist. At, at, this is Citicorp again. At the heart of plutonomy is income inequality. Okay, so you wanted admission? Talk about an admission. The definition of plutonomy, the thing they love, the thing their clients love, the heart, the core of it is income inequality. It's not something temporary. It's not something incidental to the model. It is the heart and soul of their model is producing massive inequality. Societies that are willing to tolerate slash endorse income inequality are willing to tolerate slash endorse plutonomy. So let's think about the difference between those two words. Tolerate and endorse. Bastiat's point was that you would get a whole crop of people who would endorse and try to claim that this was good to plunder. Anybody know any columnists like this? Anybody know any politicians like this? Anybody know a network like this? <laughs> right? This is their heart and soul. And that's horrific. But notice what they also say. It's not enough that there are, are this group that endorses this obscenity. This obscenity can only continue from those who tolerate as soon as we refuse to tolerate 
it will end. So as horrific, as despicable as their own words make them out, we don't need them to fix this. We, the 99%, can fix it. We have to stop tolerating in a system that is based on an enormous lie, that is based in consigning huge chunks of America and the rest of the world, by the way, to unemployment and poverty. 